All right, so today I want to talk about how to bond with your snake, and it's kind of an interesting concept. I've seen a lot of people say, I love my snake, and my snake loves me, like we have this emotional attachment. And I've actually seen quite a few YouTube videos and a lot of people posting comments on internet forums, and pretty much the number one question is, is my snake capable of bonding with me? That's the number one question. And it's kind of interesting because you really can't tell that reptiles have affection like you would other animals like like a dog would come running up to you and start licking you and you can definitely tell there's a bond there there's some affection but with the snake it's a little bit different because they're pretty much not really the same they they won't actively seek you out in most cases sometimes if you open up the tub and they come up you know they want to be held it's kind of interesting but you really don't know what they're thinking the other thing is it's kind of hard to motivate a snake with treats like little food items like you can with a lot of other animals so I, I think it's a little bit harder to motivate a snake versus the other animals. All right, so the number two question that I've heard a lot of people ask, and that is, do snakes like to be handled? And it's kind of an interesting concept. A lot of people come out and say, no, snakes don't like to be handled. You should keep the handling to a minimum. I've seen other people say, never handle a snake. They should just be left in their enclosure because they don't like to be handled. And I actually found just the opposite to be true, especially with this snake around my neck. This is Bobby, my bamboo ball python. He's out in front of the camera with me every single single day shooting YouTube videos and when I first started handling him I think he was a little bit skittish not really comfortable with me probably for the first month or so and then he got to the point where every time I go into the tub it almost seems like he's looking forward to getting out of his enclosure climbing up on my neck and just kind of looking around and you know kind of it's almost like he's crawling on a big tree you know like I'm acting like some kind of a, a kind of a jungle gym or something like that and the other th cool thing about it is is that the body temperature of people is pretty much the perfect temperature for snakes. So not only do I think they like to get out of their enclosures and kind of look around, get out and stretch, I think it's also good because we're the perfect temperature for a snake. All right, so the third point you want to consider when bonding with your snake, and that is determining the personality of your snake before you actually try to bond with it. And it's kind of interesting. I would say snakes are animals like a lot of other animals. For example, if you actually were trying to bond between you and a dog, say you brought a dog into your house and you're trying to bond with it, form that trust and that relationship. Essentially what it comes down to is the history of treatment between the dog and man. So for example, if you had a dog that was raised up in a big family as a puppy, was used to a lot of kids, you know, it was really friendly and it was treated really well, I'd say you'd have a really good chance of bonding with that dog. Versus if you went out on the street and caught this wild dog that's been out on the street for a couple years, tried to bring it into your house and tame it down, that dog may have some trust issues as far as some of the historical stuff that it's gone through out on the street between the dog and people. And it's kind of the same way with snakes. If you're bringing a snake that's been kind of treated really rough, maybe ignored or abused, and you bring it into your house, you try to bond with that snake. Let me tell you, sometimes it's extremely difficult to bond with that snake, and in some cases, I would argue it's almost impossible. All right, so the fourth thing I want to cover when it comes to bonding with your snake, and that is the length of handling sessions. And a lot of people, what they'll actually see, I've actually seen some of this on YouTube, and I think a lot of it is incorrect. As a matter of fact, with ball pythons, a lot of people are saying only handle your snake between 10 minutes and 15 minutes, and then put it back in the enclosure. And I actually disagree with that concept. As a matter of fact, if you have a snake that is a little bit skittish, especially with ball pythons, if they form a ball and ball up and you're just holding them there as a ball and you hold it for 10 minutes let me tell you that does nothing to bond between you and your snake that does nothing for your snake relationship and essentially what you want to do is you want to hold that snake until it completely relaxes kind of like Bobby is here and just starts crawling around and as soon as it comes out of the ball and starts crawling around that is when you should start the timer and I found in most cases usually a good handling session is usually between I'd say half 
half an hour and an hour. I think you should really extend your handling sessions out a little bit. And usually with Bobby here in front of the camera, we're usually here, I'd say, at least for 45 minutes working through, you know, trying to make these videos. It's kind of interesting. And it seems like, you know, the longer the session, the, the kind of the more, I would say if I go over an hour, he gets a little bit like, I want to get off your shoulder. I want to get back in my enclosure. And it seems like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour is like the sweet spot where you really bond with your snake. He enjoys being out, but he doesn't really like to be out for a really long time. He likes to be put back in his enclosure. So I definitely keep my handling sessions probably between half an hour and an hour. All right, so tip number five when it comes to bonding with your snake, and that is don't be afraid to take a bite. And it's kind of interesting. Sometimes this will hinder you from your relationship with your snake. It's kind of interesting because essentially what happens is you get to the point where the snake trusts you, but you don't really trust the snake and you don't really get the mouth close to maybe your face or your bare skin or your hands or something like that. And I would say it really depends on the snake too. If you have a snake that tends to bite, I would definitely keep your skin and your face and everything away until you can tame that snake down and build that trust but it gets to the point where especially with this ball python here you know it got to the point where he trusted me completely and I was trying to keep the, the face away from me all the time because I didn't trust Bobby he is a new snake I didn't know what he's been through and I didn't really trust that he wouldn't bite me and it got to the point where I figured out that this snake will not bite me at all <laughs> he's, he's so mellow it's amazing this snake has never tried to bite me ever it's, 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 he gets a little aggressive when it comes to feeding but other than that he's never really taken a bite and sometimes it just comes down to you know you're working with your snake day after day you have enough time with them you just have to actually take the snake and you know get them a little bit closer and risk the bite don't be afraid of the bite all right, so for number six, you wanna avoid the feeding strike. And the feeding strike's a little bit different than a snake that is out to aggressively or defensively trying to bite you. As a matter of fact, you can have the sweetest snake in the world and you can still get bit. And how that happens is, for example, Bobby lives in a gray tub in my ARS rack behind me. If I actually just open the tub just a little bit and put my finger in the tub, he would think that my finger was a rat and he would actually bite it and wrap around it. You definitely wanna avoid the feeding strike. The other thing you have to keep in mind that if you have the sweetest snake in the world, you can still get bit. If, for example, you're trying to feed them a rat, maybe they miss the rat and they grab your hand or something like that. They're still a really sweet snake that you still have that trust between you and the snake. You just have to realize that when they're in feeding mode, sometimes they can go a little ballistic and, and you really have to read the snake really well, get them transitioned out of the feeding mode and into the handling mode where you can actually work with them a little bit more. And what you want to do is, especially if you have a snake in feeding mode, you know, sometimes if I pull the tub out and he's, his head's popping up, going back and forth real quick, looking for a rat, and I know he's probably going to bite me if I get too close. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually take the tub out of the rack and I'll slowly turn it 180 degrees or even sometimes 360, just really slow turning the tub around. And for some reason, that seems to snap them right out of feeding mode. Then they go right into handling mode. All right, so tip number seven, when you're trying to bond with your snake, I would say go slow and be patient. Sometimes it takes a long time to actually tame down a snake. I'd say especially if that snake has some negative history and you're trying to really convert it and build that trust, maybe a loss some trust. As a matter of fact, I have one snake here that just, <laughs> I've tried to tame that snake down and bond with that snake. And let me tell you, that snake just does not come out of it. I don't know what the history was before I got it. I got it kind of as a sub adult and for whatever reason that snake does not like me and I've come to the point where I was like alright I'm not gonna bond with this snake I'm just gonna use it as a breeder which you know in a breeding operation I say is okay but really what I do is when I'm working with my snakes cleaning all the tubs what I really like to do is I like to pick up the snake put them in one hand and I usually spot clean with the other hand so what that does is it gives every snake in my whole collection even if it's just a short little time with me to be handled it gives them just just a little bit, just enough to build that trust between me and the snake. 
All right, so for number eight, I would argue that daily handling helps bonding with your snake. And it's kind of interesting, a lot of people say, you know, especially when you first get your snake, a lot of people say don't touch it for two or three days. Some people say don't touch your snake for two or three weeks. And a lot of people will actually say don't handle your snake more than two or three times a week. But I've found completely opposite results when it comes to Bobby here. I'm handling him every single day for about an hour a day. This snake loves to be out and he loves to be handled and he is the tamest snake that I've ever seen anywhere pretty much. It's amazing what daily handling can do for a snake. All right, so number nine is more of a word of caution when you're trying to bond with your snake, and that is don't fall asleep with your snake. And I've seen a lot of people trying to bond with their snake, and what they'll do is they'll bring it up into their bedroom, you know, on the comforter or on their couch, and they'll kind of snuggle up with their snake in the blankets. The problem is, is if you fall asleep, number one, it can be really dangerous for your snake if you actually roll over on top of your snake, especially if you have a really small snake. And number two, if you actually fall asleep, your snake could escape and you can lose it for good. I actually had a really small Arizona Mountain King Snake that I lost in the house about two and a half years ago and we never found it. Let me tell you, if you lose a snake, it can be a pretty panicking experience. In some cases, you'll never find that snake. All right, so for number 10, how to bond with your snake, and that is don't treat your snake rough. Be really gentle with your snake. Make sure you don't hurt the snake, especially if you have strangers or people that are a little bit afraid of snakes. Make sure they don't drop them or squeeze them too hard. Or if you have toddlers, you want to supervise at all times. Make sure that that snake is being treated properly. Because let me tell you, you can have a really super friendly snake, and someone starts really hurting the snake or acting inappropriately around the snake, you definitely don't want to lose that trust relationship between you and that snake. And I would say for a snake like Bobby, let me tell you, it would take probably a lot of rough handling to get this snake to where it would actually bite me. But one of the things you definitely want to avoid is rough handling. All right, so for number 11, if you really want to bond with your snake, you can actually take the snake into other rooms of your house. Take him to new places. It's kind of interesting when I actually have Bobby here out on my neck and I go into another room. Seems like his head kind of pops up and he starts looking around, kind of periscoping, checking out new places. I think it really helps to bond with your snake if you take him to new places. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Michael Ross asks, is it normal for ball pythons to go off of food even though you're not breeding them? And that is a very interesting question. As a matter of fact, I have quite a few ball pythons that I have in my room right here that I'm not breeding this year. And it seemed like as soon as all my other ball pythons went off of food, my males and my females that were pairing up, you know, normally you would expect those to go off of food. But it almost seems like at the same time, my non-breeders also went off of food. And it's kind of interesting. I don't know how they can tell the seasons or what really going on because I'm pretty much completely in an enclosed room. You really can't see the light coming in from outside. The temperature is always the same in this room. So it's kind of interesting that I don't know if it's just coincidence or if something's going on where they just know what time of year it is. It's the time to breed and everyone's going off of food all at the same time, even if you're not pairing up. And I would say in most cases, when it comes to ball pythons, a ball python will eat when it wants to eat and fast when it wants to fast. I'd say a lot of times it's mostly unpredictable. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.